Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about ventilating hair. Ventilating hair is basically applying hair strand by strand to a lace to make a lace front wig, to make a lace closure, um, front to whatever it is that you want to do. So here you can see I have a wig that I'm working on. It's not fully done yet. The back is sewn in to a cap and basically from ear to ear on this wig will be lace and probably about two inches in the front is lace. So here, so here I have tracks sewn in and you can see where the lace starts. So all of this up here in the front from ear to ear is basically hand ventilated. Um, like I said, I'm not fully done. You can see all of this lace I have to do. And yeah, so there's different techniques. There's different types of knots. There's different uh, needles to use. Today, I'm just gonna be discussing really basic and what I do 90% of the time. So here is the needle I use, which is an Asian needle. Um, so there are, it's not focusing, there's a couple of different needles that you can use. You can use an Asian needle, didn't want to focus. You can use an Asian needle, German needle, you can use a latch hook. Um, it's all about preference, I prefer an Asian needle. So this is the needle and then this is just the holder because you can detach the needle from the holder to be very careful and also the tip here you got to be very careful because there is a tiny hook so it goes like this and like this but then there's a tiny hook that goes back and just be very careful because it'll get caught in your skin it's happened to me so many times it'll get caught in your clothes it'll get caught um, on pretty much anything because that little hook basically keeps the hair in place so that you can tie the hair into a knot to to your lace so this is the needle and what I usually do is if I'm switching needles I will loosen this a little bit hold it in place and then tighten it you want to make sure your needle doesn't slip out but you want to make sure that you leave a good amount of length here because it's just going to be really awkward if you put your needle all the way down here you're not going to really have any length it's just going to really feel awkward when you're ventilating so this is the needle i use um unfortunately can i find my other size needles but i'll give you an example of the little baggies and if you order this needle um you're going to notice that Usually it comes with four different needles. So this says one, 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 two, two, three, then there's like three, four. Um, so basically this is gonna be the smallest one. So that's what I have on now. And one, one means you can grab one uh, strand of hair. So if you have something like a two, three, you can grab two to three strands of hair. And it's gonna depend on how thick your hair is I've used synthetic hair that was very thick so um, that I couldn't grab two, three strands from on this, so that's not good. Um, but yeah, it will depend on your hair quality as well. So that's what the little numbers mean on these packs. So I have one one for right now because I am working on the front of this wig, but usually um, I use one one when I'm getting more towards the hairline or where I want an area to be a bit thinner. So we usually always want the hairline to be look a little thinner, right? You don't want to go as full as you would the back of a wig. Um, that's why people are always plucking the front of their wigs because it's just too thick towards the front. So with ventilating your own wigs, whether it just be the front or closure, you can determine how thick you want it right um so i'm working more towards the hairline i'm gonna 
make it a bit more thinner to my liking. Also, the amount of strands you take on one needle at a time is not going to make it go faster. So don't think you're gonna take two or three strands and um, you're gonna make the wig any fancy, uh, make it any faster, it's not gonna happen. Taking two, three, three strands at a time just makes your, your wig thicker. So um, just keep that in mind when you're making it. And the good thing about ventilating your own wigs is that you can always go back and add more hair, right? Or you can always just pluck if you add it too much hair. Now I'm gonna talk real quick about the hair. So here I have some bulk hair. Basically, it comes like this. There's no weft on top or anything, it's just loose hair. And then I have a piece of wefted hair. So I use both, I really don't have a preference. However, I do find when I get the wefted hair, um, the bulk hair, it definitely comes with a lot more um, than if you buy bundles of wefted hair. So I really don't have a preference, but I feel like you get more bang for your buck when you get bulk hair. So I have, I think this is 16, 16 inches. This right here, I think is 18 or 20 inches. Pretty sure it's 20. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that when you ventilate, you're gonna lose inches. So if you wanna make an 18 inch wig, do not get 18 inch hair. You're gonna get 20 inch hair or 22 inch hair. And actually I recommend getting 22 inch hair because once you get to the top crown area, um, you're definitely gonna be losing more inches, okay? Um, so let me actually show you on the bulk hair. So I'll take a piece out. When I ventilate, I usually work with about this much hair. Uh, sometimes I could put a little more, doesn't really matter. For me, I know some people like to use less, some people like to use more at a time. So I will take it and fold it like so. So this is what I'm saying when I say if you want a 20 inch wig, um, 18 inch wig, you're gonna have to get 20 to 22 inch hair because you're gonna have to fold it in half and then guess what, you're losing that length. So this is how long it's gonna be. So this hair was about 20 inches once you start ventilating it's gonna go down to about 18 inches or 16 inches even probably 16 inches okay so you're gonna have to get a longer than actual wig length you want so I will fold it like so but before I fold it something I like to do because usually when you get wefted hair it's really blunt cut up here right so I don't want to fold it and it just be like blunt um because you will kind of see that and I don't know if you guys notice in lace fronts there's a lot of little flyaways and that's because the hair is ventilated um once you ventilate you'll notice it you'll notice exactly what I'm talking about so usually I'll take the hair and feather it out so if you're familiar with like um box braids using hair to box braid then you know exactly what i'm getting at you kind of feather the hair out right so that it's not bluntly cut and then you can fold it over so that it sort of just blends more you see hold on so you fold it over so that it'll blend more easy when you ventilate as opposed to it just being bluntly cut like that. So I usually do, I usually fold it over about this much. So this is like, not halfway, I no way that's halfway, folding it in half is way too long in my opinion, but you also don't wanna do something like this to try to keep the length. You don't wanna do this because you're gonna, it's gonna get fold, it's gonna get tied up into a knot right and then it's just gonna create a lot of these see that it's gonna create a lot of that 
on your wig. So you don't want to fold it too short either. Um, so I'm not a good judge with with length. Um, so I don't know, this is about three inches maybe, something, something like that. So that's about how much I like to fold it. And then I just hold the hair in my hand like this. What I do is I'll spread it so that I can see individual strands. So if you have too much hair in your hand, it, it becomes a little bit difficult to do this or you, you might find yourself like wasting hair. Um, so I kind of get it so that's like that, right? And And I doesn't want to focus today. So in this way, I'm able to see each individual strand and what I'm grabbing. Um, lighting is very important, obviously, because you are dealing with individual strands of hair. So you want to see what you're doing. Now, when it comes to the needles, if you have a 1-1 one, one needle, you're going to notice it's not going to let you grab two, three strands at a time. So this is a good way. Um, I know... I have the habit if I'm working with, if I'm working with a three four needle in the front I would just kind of automatically like I don't know I would grab more strands of hair because the needle allows it and um, I find myself having to like remove some of that hair and it just becomes I don't know it's just easier to use one one if I just want one strand because the needles won't really allow you to take more. So with the 1-1 one, one needle, the most I grabbed is two strands of hair, and sometimes it'll grab onto it. Sometimes it'll just slip off and let go of that extra hair. So here is my wefted hair. And this is not great quality hair. It's um, not the worst synthetic hair, but it's not the best. So usually what I do is cut a piece off like this. It doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it definitely is. If you look at this, I don't know how much, how many strands does this look like to you? It's quite a lot of strands if you're dealing with having to put individual strands onto a lace. So I don't really cut a piece bigger than this, mainly because I don't know how long I'm gonna sit there and ventilate. I don't wanna waste hair. Um, and I just like to cut off what I'm going to, I know I'm going to use at that moment. So what I do is take a piece about this big. Um, and then I cut as close to the weft part as possible. And you're just cutting off that weft. Okay. So you're cutting it off. Now with wefted hair, you will see those little strands, right? Those little tiny, especially with cheaper hair you see like those little things. So I take that, look at that. I just pull it out by holding this. Just pull it out and then I do the same process that I did with the bulk hair. I um, make it so that it's not this blunt. You see how blunt that is? When you fold it over, it doesn't look so cute, right? So, I do the same thing with this. I sort of feather it out as best as possible. Um, so this is another reason why I said you're gonna, besides losing um, length when you're folding over, when you're feathering it, it's kind of, kind of takes out some of that length too. So that's about how much I would fold it over and it just looks better. It just looks better opposed to it um, being just blunt. And again, I hold it like this. See, this amount of hair would probably be too much at a time in my opinion. So I would probably take half of this and work with half of it. Fold it over, spread it out, and work with that. You also don't want to hold it too, too down like this. It's gonna be awkward when you're when you're working with it. You want to just leave a little bit up here, probably like pinky size up here. 
So another thing I have handy is usually a water bottle. Some people like to wet the hair they're gonna use when they're ventilating, it might help you easier. For me, I usually don't wet it. When I sit down and ventilate wigs, I'm usually not thinking about let me wet the hair before, but it might be beneficial for you. It might help you out better. You might have an easier time with ventilating. For me, I don't really mind it. Um, or if I do, I just sort of like moisten it just a little bit. And the only reason I even like doing that is to prevent some of the, like those little flyaways. Um, but most of the time, I don't work with it, the hair wet. And for me, I find that starts happening, like the hair will stick a little, but it's all about preference. You might find it beneficial, you might not, but either if you wet the hair or you dry the hair is really up to you. I usually, most of the time, use it dry. Well, basically, I would just put my needle underneath, like so, see? Then, it helps to have your strands spread out like this because it's just easier for you to grab it as opposed to like pulling out a strand every single time you're going to put one on the lace that's just way too time consuming so underneath and then you're going to grab it so you see the the needle is really good with grabbing the hair and it'll stay put because again there's a little hook right at the tip of the needle it's really really tiny but it's there so I have I think two strands and actually this is my one one needle um, so sometimes it'll let me take two strands and then you're going to go underneath kind of turn it I like to turn it down and you can see even when I turn it down the hair does not come out then I pull it I'm still holding it onto it in this hand until it's all the way through so see and I'm gonna do it more times for you guys I'll also do it with colored hair Okay, so I got some blonde hair and y'all please excuse my nails. Um, I had to take acrylics off and um, can't really do much with acrylics. I can, but they're just kind of annoying. So please excuse my chewed up hands. So I have it go underneath, grab it and pull through. So here I am applying the hair to regular lace. I really tried my best to put the camera up close as best as possible so you can see it. Hopefully you guys get the gist of it. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will be sure to comment. 
Um, if I miss anything, I will try to record another video on this topic along with other techniques and different needles and such as well. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, leave your comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.